guys. How are you? How are you? How are you? This is Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. That's Knowledge by Nikki at Gmail. That's Knowledge by Nikki at Facebook. That's Knowledge by Nikki at Instagram. That's Knowledge by Nikki.com. Uh, LinkedIn. Knowledge by Nikki at everything. Okay, 1K. Just remember that. Uh, <coughs> I noticed a Facebook post the other day. And it was actually coming from uh, my friend who's the uh, director of education for Bronner Brothers. And I noticed the post stated something that obviously was put on Facebook that she was addressing a lot of the industry about. And the post was talking about uh, some salon. I'm not familiar with where the salon was, where the workers had actually went into the salon and the salon obviously uh, had no electricity. Now, I've been in this industry a real, real long time. And I that honestly, I hate to say it, but that was mild compared to some of the things that I've seen. I have seen... Of not having electricity, that was nothing. Because that's a easy, that's an easier fix, believe it or not. As long as somebody gets some money, if you want to pay the bill, they let you pay it. I have seen salons where IRS has padlocked the place and had everybody's stuff up in there. I have seen salons where when people came, all the furniture and everything in it was outside and people were rummaging through it. I have, I have heard of salons where the owner, because they wanted to run an insurance scam, set everything on fire. I have heard it all. I mean, literally, I've heard of all type of uh, uh, damage done to, to salons and they didn't have the proper insurance. Um, so I've heard it all, y'all. So when I heard that and she, uh, Tish Sutton, who sent out the tag people to kind of respond to it, she, she was asking for us to basically give some input on it. And uh, it was funny because I still haven't input it yet, but let me tell you one thing I learned a very, very, very long time ago, and I probably should have named this Facebook Live, Are You Covered? That's probably what I should have named it. Actually, I'm producing a new book that's called Are You Covered? I'll talk about that a little later. We do not understand that with the magnitude of the things that we do in a salon, and this is for salon owners and for people that are booth renters. Both. When you are working in someone's space, as a booth renter, first of all, you have your own uh, uh, responsibility to have your own, you should, your own liability, and it needs to cover everything that you have in that space. Everything. There is something also that would prevent you from falling into these, well, not say prevent, but that would aid you, assist you, if you fall into these situations where uh, no one had insurance or they didn't set the place on fire or the IRS didn't padlock the place or they didn't pay the electricity. There is something in place that you can have that will, it won't help you at that moment, but it can help you for possible lost wages. But let me give you, when I really learn how uh, beneficial what I'm going to talk to you about is, is when I myself went through it back in, Oh, God, it might have been late 90s, 2000. And this, this is a little long, but I'm going to read it to you. I got to take my glasses off to read it to you, right? All right, let's, this happened to me. I wrote this article for two magazines. It was an unusually warm Chicago day in January. All of a sudden, I noticed water coming into the break room in my salon. This happened to me. It seemed as if it was coming from the upper floor of the building. After carefully investigating, I thought I, it was raining. Y'all, it was like it was raining on the whole third floor. And the roof had caved in on the south side of the building. All the tenants, approximately 10, that's about how many, this was a professional building, so it was a three-tier professional building. Uh, where was I? Where, where was I? Uh, 10 rushed to the first floor, which was occupied by the building manager. She was a doctor, to, to like, what's up? Inquire about the problem. What's going on? The manager very vaguely, and I do remember this, stated, we handling it. We got this. I'm like, y'all don't have this because it's, it's straight up raining on the on the third floor. And that was because it snows in Chicago. So it had snowed. It was a flat roof. So once the, the snow starts to melt, it turns into just literally a swimming pool on top of the roof. And the roof of the building, instead of them doing a tear-off, Every time it needed to be repaired, they had just kept putting shingle after shingle after shingle. And those of you all that own your own homes or have dealt with this, you know what I'm talking about. You keep putting shingle after shingle after shingle. That roof is going to get crazy heavy. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, a, a accident waiting to happen. So you got the weight of about 12 layers of shingles. 
And then you also have the snow, which to turn into a swimming pool because like the other day, we had a 60 degree day in January in Chicago. It happens every now and again. So that's what caused the roof to buckle. We all try to continue business as usual, despite the water continually pouring in because now the water, the whole third floor is, is totally jacked up and it's starting to go through the joists. And through the vents, it's, I mean, it's like a serious flood, right? And to make matters worse, I told you this part already, the snow on the flat roof continued to melt, causing more water to pour in. So after about two hours, a mass of people swarmed the building in an attempt to fix this enormous problem. I had never seen a circus like this. Uh, we soon realized that none of these people were from roofing companies. They were from everywhere else but roofing companies. All of these service providers range from flood recovery to mold eradication specialists, all kind of stuff, people to, you know, to, to suck the water out and all of that. As they went in action doing what they do, it almost became entertainment. We, we was just really tripping on all this stuff, right? To watch them scurry frantically to solve the problem. Endless to say it was quite a production. We continued to work despite the tubes going through the hallways, big enough y'all to fit a body through, and powerful floor heaters strong enough to blow even the most sculpted hairstyle away. Uh, this fiasco went on for about a week. Every day, this they were doing something else, right? Still ain't no roof people. I ain't seen not one roofing person. Uh, then on a Wednesday, I happened to look out the window and noticed that the village chief inspector, which was a block, the, the village is a block down the street. So why the owner would do this is beyond me. Um, where am I at here? I was standing in front of the building, standing in front of the parking lot looking quite puzzled. Like, what is all this? The village had not been informed of this problem and was surprised to see all the work trucks, large equipment, uh, all of this position in the parking lot. I saw him discussing something with the building manager and she did not look happy at all. She looked pissed, whatever he told her. Moments later, we got a knock on the salon door. I was on the second floor of this three-story building, okay? So I'm in the middle uh, asking us, how many clients are we servicing right now? We told us about five because it was early, maybe only about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. He said, okay, make that your last five because I'm about to shut this whole building down. So we like, okay. And I think at the time I had maybe maybe about seven workers, seven uh, booth renters. Uh, this no, seven, no, I had four commission and two booth renters or something like that. Okay, so this is the question I need to ask you all. What do you do when your business is hit with a work stoppage order due to no fault of your own? How do you replace the thousands of dollars in lost revenue? As I stood in the parking lot talking to the other tenants, I realized that I was the only one out of the doctors, lawyers, accountant, because it was that type of building, that had the necessary rider connected to my business liability insurance policy that could cover this. This policy is called business interruption insurance. Y'all, I didn't even know I had it. I honestly had no idea. I, I, I just had, obviously, a good insurance person. I didn't even remember having this, but I had it. This part of my policy replaces lost revenue due to emergencies such as fire, flood, theft, etc. The writer on the policy not only paid me 83% of the total gross earnings for 45 days. We were out of this building, y'all, for 45 days. That's how long it took for them to get this building together. So we ain't talking about just no lights being cut off. We talking about big red tag. You better not come in here for 45 days. And, um, but, it also but it also took into account what I had invested into the build out part of the salon that was damaged because my whole storage room was damaged. I was able to collect 72% of the depreciated value of my initial investment for the build out. Needless to say, it was an unexpected and much needed payday. The moral of this story is this experience helped me realize that there are far more things when opening, running, maintain, and maintaining a successful salon or any business for that matter. <clears throat> I'm a 29-year licensed hairstylist, salon owner, industry educator, mentor, and business consultant. Through divorce, business eviction, foreclosure, cancer, and many other life-altering events, because I have been through all that, y'all, cancer twice, uh, I have learned that there is much more to take into consideration about the salon ownership than just learning how to be proficient and cutting, coloring, weaving, etc. Now, I wrote that magazine and I see the, the, the CEO is on there. You see that? All right. I'm giving Vera a shout out. That's Healthy Beauticians Unite. I wrote, I wrote that for her magazine. And this is real, guys. So what do you do? 
What do you do? Y'all know I can't read with my glasses on. It's too close. What do you do when your business is interrupted due to no fault of your own? There are so many things, guys. When I say so many, I cannot tell you the endless experiences I have had understanding what I need to have in place. Now, wait, let me go back. Do you all know that out of the doctors, lawyers, accountants, all these other professional people who, unlike us, they can't just pick up their curling irons and go nowhere. They literally, we, well, Dennis, he can't pick up his chair. He can't pick up his chair. An accountant cannot pick up all their computers. They could try, maybe go do whatever they need to do, but basically they're stuck. Do you know none of them? None of the, I didn't even know I had it y'all. So I ain't gonna act like I just was on, on top of it. I didn't know I had it. I just know when I got the insurance, I was young and I told them I needed to cover everything that even can happen. That's what I do remember saying. None of them had that kind of insurance. None of them had insurance that if your business is interrupted, what do you do? And let me tell you this also, let me add to this. Now I have State Farm. Now you know State Farm ain't just gonna pay you because you say you made $10,000, $20,000 a month. No, that's not going to happen. I had to have good, legible, uh, uh, reachable records. My records were so pristine. They said, give me this, 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 that, and the other for the build out, for your lost wages for the last 45 days. They said, give me everything. And at the touch of a button, I was able to say, Poop, bam, print it. I was able to fax it. I think we were still faxing back then. I was able to have it and send it to them. So for those of you all, I don't know how many of you all have talked to salon owners and otherwise are not even keeping good records. So if even if you got the insurance, if this happens to you and you don't have no good records, you ain't gonna get no money no way because you're not gonna be able to produce what they need in order for them to see what you lost. So that was another thing. It's not just about having it, but you got to have the records to show, consistent records. And, and I know y'all try to dumb him up and go get somebody. No, no, no. No, when this stuff happens, you need your money like ASAP. And like I said, I think I got my money, I want to say, in about maybe about 90 days. It took about three months. I didn't care because let me tell you what we did. A girl that happened to be in the same, we were in a strip plaza, but it was a professional building that was against the, facing the street. I took my whole crew, the girl who had the salon in the strip had just had issues with her workers where they all walked out on her. So we literally picked, do you know how happy she was to see seven people come and say, can we work here for, for a month and a half? She was a happy camper. That was a blessing in disguise for her. And she had a huge shop, like about a 5,000 square foot salon. She in plenty of space. She had probably about 15 chairs in there. So, and so we were able to work comfortably. We didn't miss a beat. So y'all, not only did we still make our money, but we got paid. And I made sure that I distributed some of that cash to my people just for them going, Hey, here, a little bonus for you, little bonus for you. It was money I didn't have. I took care of them too. So these are the type of things that you're going to have to have in place. I learned a lot about insurance and I'm not saying insurance is everything, but in our business, you need to have it. So I wrote a book a years ago, guys, I had to dig it back out my archives. Anybody who bought the book years ago, it was called let's teach old dogs, new tricks. And it was like this thick guys. It was like an encyclopedia. And I remembered I had a whole section like a book in itself on insurance so i decided to go ahead and i'm getting ready to produce a reference book called are you covered and it's just i'm just going to take out of the book i already wrote but i want to give you some of the uh basic insurance plans that you need these are these are some obviously you're gonna have to get the book for me to go through all of them but obviously you need basic liability okay you need basic liability that's going to cover and this is booth renters and salon owners, let me tell you this. You should not have any booth renters working in your salon that do not have their own coverage, period. They should have their own coverage and you should require to see a copy of their policy about every six months because I do know situation where they showed it to you when they first got there, but then if they don't pay the premiums and they get canceled, you don't know that because there is a way, believe it or not, for salon owners, when you're booth renting, that they, if they're working in your space and they 
take their hair out or burn them real bad or something, there is a way that they can actually come after you if you don't have something else in place. And you need to have the contract when they're there stating before they start that they are responsible for their own insurance. I have a contract pack. You all know about that. It's called Paper Makes Permanent. Let me actually, it's, let me grab it real quick. It's right here. That's this right here because I'm in my office. It has a contract in there that states, some of you all have already bought this, and I have the disc that allows you to put your own name and information and all that stuff in there. You need to make sure you have that because things do happen. They want to sue the worker. The worker got the insurance, but they didn't keep it up, so it's just like they don't have it. So you need to ask on a regular basis to see proof of insurance still in force, okay? Then, now this is something else that you can offer, and a lot of suites offer this. If for whatever reason you're not comfortable, which this is the route I chose when I went from all commission to having booth rentals, I chose this route because I ain't got time to be checking in and making sure you're paying your premiums. I told them when they started that your liability can come through me. I will give you what's called an additional cost per year for me to have what's called a negligent rider. That means I have a rider put on that it has your name on it, your government name, that says that I am also covering you from for the 12 month period while you're here and you have to pay that every year. And it may be like 150 or $200 total to the person every year to cover them because it's not gonna cost you that much more on your policy but it is necessary and this is the way I end up doing it because I wanted to make sure that they had insurance. So this will be connected to your business liability policy. Then I just told you about the business interruption rider. This was something that you have to ask for. I was so glad I had the type of insurance person that knew I needed it. I didn't even know I needed it. <clears throat> so I had that. This is very, very necessary for Two different types of people. If you're a salon owner and it's not your space, you're in, say, a strip mall or spaces where you have other tenants. I know situations where, you know, somebody didn't, didn't, didn't burn the building down or something happened in another unit and it caused wreaked havoc with other units. Or if you're a booth renter, you can still have this because if you're a salon owner, like I started off this particular uh, Facebook Live talking about didn't pay the light bill and it, and for whatever reason, if she don't pay or he doesn't pay the light bill for a week because obviously she ain't got the money, you lost wages for a week. And it doesn't have to be the one that I have. It's no, no particular amount of days. You don't have to be out of work for uh, a year or three months for this to kick in. It kicks in immediately, even if you lose one or two days work. Because for some of us, one or two days is a lot of money, right? So that is something that you can get as a booth renter or you can also get as a salon owner. Then you have something called critical care illness. I have all this stuff. It's critical care illness. This is something that for self-employed people, I know someone that this happened to where they had a breast cancer and they were out of work for an extended period of time and their basic major medical didn't have this policy. Almost like, I don't know how many of you all remember the movie John Q, where John Q, which was Denzel Washington and uh, what's her name, uh, Kimberly Elise, they were fighting because on their insurance policy, they didn't have catastrophic coverage. Catastrophic coverage is a whole different part of the policy that covers things like liver transplants, uh, extended periods of cancer, things like that. And critical illness, they kind of fall into the same category, but they are separate policies and there are companies that offer them separately. But they, are, they can, depending on who you have, be connected to your major medical. But critical illness, the girl I was saying with the breast cancer, she ended up having to get one breast removed, and then she ended up having to get another. So when you're talking about <clears throat> being out for an extended period of time and beyond a certain dollar amount, because you do know now, I think with the Obamacare, if you have that now, they can't cap you out at a million dollars. But back then they could. And if anybody's been in the hospital, I have been in the, I've been hospitalized nine times. So I know what it means to, to for stuff to, it gets there quick. That money adds up quick, y'all. So you can max out a million dollars real quick. Critical care 
will allow you to be able to get the rehabilitation you need. Uh, like the girl with the cancer, I also know somebody that had a really bad motorcycle accident where they had to learn how to walk again. They almost lost their leg. The whole nine. So critical care illness is another insurance that we are applicable for because you do know that they, a lot of insurance companies consider us non-applicable now. So you, so I have done the research and if you all decide to get the book, it probably won't be ready for about another two months now because obviously things are a little different now. So I've added a little bit to it. And the name of the book is, are you covered? That's the name of the book that I'm, <clears throat> that I just started on. It's a good reference book. Then we have disability income. All of us should have that. We should know what it is. That's if everything that we do as hairstylists, as salon owners, especially if you're a salon owner, still working in your salon. Everything that you do, if you get into an accident, it doesn't necessarily say you have to be hospitalized. But if you break your thumb, you can't work. If you break these two fingers, if you break your wrist, you can't work. So it's not about just being hospitalized. It's about being disabled to the point where you cannot perform the task of your, or the duties of your job. So disability income is what you need in order to cover that. And you want to get something that has the shortest what they call turnaround period. That means that the uh, it, it'll cover after 14 days or after seven days. Uh, you mess around and get something that says it won't cover to after 90 days, six months, then unless you better make sure that you have six months, which you should anyway, six months worth of your bills stacked up money so that you can take care of yourself for that time frame while you can't work. So again, when you get the book, I'll have more information about that. Now, this is something I learned from my insurance provider as well. It's called hospital income. And a person like me who's been hospitalized a lot, I realized I needed it because hospital income, what it does, uh, those of us that are paying pretty high deductibles, we're paying really high deductibles so that we can get low premiums. That means that once you get hospitalized, you may still have to settle up 5000 10000 whatever it is. Hospital income, literally you can set it up according to how much you want it to pay you per day. Now, that also will adjust your premiums. If you say, I have $500, it'll pay me $500 per day that I'm in the hospital. So if I'm in the hospital for five days, it'll cut me a $2,500 check, which is the purpose of that is to put towards your deductible, okay? That's something else that's available to you. And then we also have something called Key Man. Yes, all this is in the book. I already wrote the book. I just decided, look, I'm gonna show y'all. Y'all see this? This is the book. I, I tore the pages out, y'all. Hold on, I'm going to show y'all in one second. Let me, I, let me turn around, make sure it ain't crazy. This is the book that I used to sell. This is, this, is not, this is just my copies. This book was $300. It's got everything in it. So I decided to take that section, which is about 30 pages long, out of the book and create another book. Because this is like information on steroids. I used to sell this book all the time. It's got everything in it. Everything you need to know. But it's too big. So I sell smaller reference books now. But yes, all of this will be in a book. It's called Are You Covered? That's what it is. But it'll have the information and companies. So the last one that I want to talk about is called Key Man Insurance. Now, my goal is to get the salon owners where they don't need this. But I do understand in the beginning, key man insurance simply means this. If you are the key person and your financial con contribution to the business will literally matter if you're there or not there, the business will suffer if you're not there, then key man insurance, if something happens to you and it's just for your business now, that means you can't work whatever portion percentage comes out of your income that is put back into the business, the key man insurance will pay that gap. Okay. A lot of <clears throat> ministers have what's called key man insurance. Cause you know, in black churches, especially if the main pastor who's not there or is not there, people won't come to church if they know he's not there. And even though they got a thousand ways to pay your tithes now, they are not sending it online. They're not texting it in. They're not doing none of that. So what they do is, if let's say he's out on a sabbatical or he's injured, whatever, they know the difference. They've been able to track the difference in what the financial part of the business looks like from when he is there to when he isn't there. And there's that gap. 
So when he isn't there, key man insurance is structured to pay the gap as if he or she is still present. Now, my goal is to get you salon owners where your money has nothing to do with the business running. That is my goal. I want to be able to help you, to coach you, to be able to say, I, you take all your money home and you're able, your business becomes self-sustaining. That is the ultimate goal. But I get it in the beginning or until you figure some things out, that just isn't always the case. But those are, look, my time flies when we're having fun, don't it? Those are the basic insurance things that you can have to cover you in the event that something happens that was no fault of your own, that is for salon owners, that is for booth renters. If you are commissioned, then you are covered under your salon's policy. But I know a good percentage of you all are booth renters. And even if the salon owner, which they should, require, does not require you to have that, I would advise you to have it anyway. Because let's say this, something happens to the salon, the most salon owners are literally only going to cover their own things. Let's say a fire happened, a theft. Somebody came in and we, I've had that too. I've had people take the window out. Somebody came in and stole a bunch of stuff. They stole your stuff too. Believe it or not, the salon owner don't have to cover your stuff. She ain't got to cover your curling irons and your blow dryer. And she ain't got to cover none of that. Or he. They don't have to cover your products. That's not part of their policy. Now, a uh, 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 ethical salon owner would include all of that in her losses and give you what you need. But we know everybody isn't ethical, which I'm trying to change. But they do not have to cover you at all. So when you talk about the money you need to spend for insurance, for things to make sure that you are protected, because stuff happens, life happens, then you're going to have to look at it as a cost of doing business, as just something you need. And what's that old statement? It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And I have been in many situations that showed me, I'm so glad I had this. I'd have been broken. I'd have been hospitalized. I've had the water damage. Look, even when I was married, I had issues with my ex-husband that I won't reveal on here only because uh, he might be looking that caused me to have to use insurance situations. So these are things that you're going to have to have in order to make sure your business does not miss a beat. It is absolutely necessary. Please, everyone, share this. This is information time. This ain't no hooping and hollering sermon. This is something I want you all to know to get it. Uh, I am here to help you all in the best way that I can. This free knowledge now, but now I got something you can pay for. And that's my stretch movement. That is an empowerment coaching program where I am literally at your, well, let me not say your disposal. I better be not be so loose when I say that because y'all can't call me every day now. But I am basically there to help you for 12 months. You pay a membership for 12 months to my stretch empowerment coaching movement where this kind of stuff I freely give. Okay, you pay one fee. It's I made it uh, a high enough for, so people can be serious, but I made it affordable enough where it don't kill us too bad, okay? If you are interested in this stretch movement, text me at 708-798-7900. I will happily send you information on the stretch movement. The book, I just decided when, uh, maybe about two months ago, to write the book, because I got all the information. It's just putting it together and all that good stuff, but it's gonna be called, Are You Covered? Are You Covered? Uh, it's so many things, as you heard me say in the end of the article that I did. I got where, where isn't that, Miss Vera? I got to give Vera a shout out again. I appreciate her putting me in the book, Healthy Beauticians Unite. That's Vera Jackson's magazine. She gave me a full page ad. I appreciate her for that. And that's what I talked about. I just talked about my experience and what I went through. And I'm gonna tell you, me, little old me, I was standing out there with all these doctors and lawyers, and I'm like. Y'all ain't got this kind of insurance. What you mean? You? And they out there, the dentist alone was panicking because that dentist used to be packed. And he was like, oh my God, can you imagine 45 days out of business for a dentist? You all know how much. Dentists, I think they get paid more than regular doctors because, you know, every time you sit down, it's a grand for something small, you know? 
Yes, he. I, I don't know what he did. I think he was just out of money. He can't pick up the dental chair. Oh, he can't just go somewhere and work under somebody else's license uh, doing dentistry. So they were just really jacked up. So I thank God that he made sure that I was protected. I want to make sure you all protected. So you all hit me up. This is the stuff that you get. And I'm running a little bit on low gear today. I almost overslept, y'all. Y'all know I don't sleep late, but I had a call. I took some, some NyQuil that had me in a really good sleep. And so now I got to get up and, and make the donuts, y'all. So... Thank you all so much. I love my Facebook audience. I love that you all listen to me every day, Monday through Friday from 7.30 now to 8 a.m. Um, I got some good stuff for you all year long. Next February or this February, guys, I'm going to be bringing you some history. So we're going to be talking about it's Black History Month. So we're going to be doing it all month long. I'm going to do the research. I got people that help me do research. I'm going to teach you some stuff that... I probably didn't even know. I'm going to be learning too. And uh, we're going to have a good time in February. So it's almost, what's, what's today? We got about two more weeks. It's the 17th. All right. So please share this, you all. This is stuff people need to know. Again, if you want me to walk with you step by step with the stretch membership, I see several of my stretch members. Hey, my stretch members already signed up on this Facebook Live. They're ready. They're hungry. And I'm ready to give it to them. So this is Knowledge by Nikki with 1K, as my friend Eddie tells me. And I'm out, and I'll see you tomorrow. So hit me up. Somebody put that put that number up again for me, Vera. 708-798-7900. You all that text me directly. If you want information on Stretch, I do the, I'm doing the bed and breakfast color tour. And I'm also doing a salon owners conference at the end of this year. So you all text me if you're interested in any of that stuff, and I can send you information directly. We got payment plans for everything, so we, we ain't trying to hurt you too bad, all right? But I thank you all. See you tomorrow.